Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about static variables and methods in Java. Here is our outline. We will talk in depth about static variables and methods. We will see the static keyword and finally we will see an example. Let's get started. First of all, let's have a look at this scenario. In the main method, I will create two objects, C1 and C2. And these are circle objects, okay? The center of C1 is a point with x equal 1, y equal 2, and it has a radius which is equal to 3. And the center of C2 is a point with x equal 2 and y equal 3, and it has a radius which is equal to 2. After that, I will print the radius of C1 and the radius of C2, and this over here will be the output, okay? After that, I'm going to make a change to the radius of C1. I'm assigning it to be equal to 1. Also, I'm assigning the radius of C2 to be equal to 3. And after that, I'm going to print the radius of C1 and the radius of C2, and this over here will be the output. The radius of C1 is equal to 1, and the radius of C2 is equal to 3. So as you can see, each object has its own data. In this case, we are taking the radius into consideration. As you can see, the radius of C1 has its own value, and it is independent from the radius of C2. Similarly, the radius of C2 is independent from the radius of C1. So if you make a change to the radius of C1, this will not affect the radius of C2. Also, if you make a change to the radius of C2, it will not affect the radius of C1. So each circle, C1 and C2, has its own memory. Each object is independent from the other object. Now we might ask a question. How to share data between instances of the same class? In other words, what if I want to share some data between C1 and C2? What can we do? In this case, we will use static variables. So let's talk about static variables and methods, okay? First of all, static variables and static methods belong to the class. In other words, they are shared between all objects. So from a little bit, we saw that each circle has its own radius. So the radius belongs to the object. It doesn't belong to the class. It is not shared. But static variables are shared. They belong to the class. They don't belong to the object. In a little bit, we will see an example. But now let's talk more about this. First of all, if an object modifies a static variable, all objects of the same class are affected. And this is because this static variable is shared between all objects. Also, a static variable can be accessed without creating an instance of the class. And this is because the static variable belongs to the class. It doesn't belong to the object. So to access this variable, we don't need to create an object. But if you want to access the radius of a circle, then you have to create the circle first, right? So we have to create an object, and after that, we will access the radius of this object. So to access static variables, we can access them using the name of the class. And of course, when we create an object, we can access the static variables. So we have two ways to access a static variable. We can access it using an object, or we can access it using the name of the class. And the same applies for static methods. So a static method can be called using the same way. We can access it using an object or using the name of the class. Now there is one important thing we need to know about static methods. And here it is. A static method cannot access instance variables or methods. A static method can only access static variables and static methods. So if you try to access a method or a variable inside a static method and you have an error, remember that a static method can only access static variables and static methods, all right? So now let's see how we can create static variables and static methods using the static keyword. Have a look over here. I'm creating a static variable, which is an integer, and it is called number of circles. So all we have to do is to use the static keyword before the type of the variable, okay? And over here, I'm creating a static method. We use the static keyword before the return type of the method. So this method returns an integer. It is called get number of circles and inside it we are returning the number of circles. So it is very easy to create a static variable or a static method. And notice that we are able to access this variable inside this method because this variable is a static variable. If it wasn't a static variable, we won't be able to access it, okay? Now let's apply this to the circle class. So we are going to do some modifications. We will add a static variable which is called number of circles to the circle class and also we will add a static method which is get number of circles. So this variable is going to keep track of the number of circle objects that are creating using the circle class. And this variable is going to be shared between all objects, okay? It is going to be a class variable. And as you can see, it makes sense that this variable belongs to the class and it doesn't belong to a specific object. 
because this variable represent an information about the class. It doesn't represent an information about a specific object. In this case, it represents the number of objects or the number of circles that are created from this class, right? So let's go to IntelliJ and do this. So this is the circle class. As you can see, we declared another variable, which is an integer, and it is called number of circles. And this variable is a static variable. As we said before, this variable will represent the number of objects or the number of circles that are created from the circle class. So have a look over here. Inside this constructor, I'm incrementing this variable. So each time we use this constructor to create a circle object, we are increasing the number of objects. And the same thing happens in this constructor. Each time we use this constructor to create a circle object, we are increasing the number of objects, okay? And below, I created the static method. It is a static method, it returns an integer, and it is called get number of circles. And inside it, I'm simply returning the number of circles variable. So now let's go to our main class. Over here, we have two circles, C1 and C2. So before creating these two variables, the number of circles is zero, because the static variable is an integer. So its default value is going to be zero. So over here, I want to print the number of circles. First of all, we can access it using an object, or we can access it using the name of the class. So in this case, I will use the name of the class, which is circle, and I will use the dot operator. As you can see, we can access the get number of circles method, and we can access the number of circles, because they are both static, all right? So I want to print the number of circles. In this case, this will print zero. Let me duplicate this line, and I'm going to print the number of circles after creating the circle C1. So as you can see over here, we are using this constructor. And inside this constructor, we are incrementing the number of circles, right? So when we print this variable over here, we should see one printed. And we will do the same thing after creating the circle C2. And we should see two printed. So let's run the program. So as you can see, at the beginning, the number of circles was zero. After we created the circle C1, the number of circles is now one. And after that, it is two. So as you can see, this variable belongs to the class. It doesn't belong to a certain object. Now over here, I'm going to access the variable using the C1 object. And over here, I will access it using the C2 object. Run the program again, and you will see that we have the same result. So the changes that are made to a static variable are reflected to all objects, because this variable is shared between all the objects, right? Now let's try to access the static method. I will access it using the name of the class. So over here, I will say get number of circles. And we will do the same thing with C1 and C2. So over here, we will call the method, and similarly over here. So this method simply returns the value of the variable number of circles. Let's run the program, and as you can see, we have the same result. Now let's make one more thing. Over here, I'm going to access the variable using C1, number of circles. I will assign it to be equal to 10. So when this statement is executed, the value of number of circles will be equal to 10. And after that, we are creating C2 using this constructor. So we will increase the value of number of circles. So when we print it over here, we should see 11 printed. Let's run the program. And as you can see, 11 is printed. So I did this over here to show you that this variable is shared between all objects. So even if we change the value of this variable from the object C1, the change is reflected to the object C2, okay? So let's make a small summary. Each object has its own attributes that are independent from other objects. But if we want to create some shared variables between objects, we can create static variables. These variables will be class variables. We can access them using the name of the class or using an object. Now you might ask, why did I create a get number of circles method? And this method is a static method. Later on, we will not be able to access this variable using the dot operator because we will make it a private variable. So to be able to access it, we will use a method, for example, the get number of circles method. And this method is static because the variable is static. So because the variable belongs to the class, it makes sense to make the method belong to the class, right? So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.